Hey everyone and welcome to another Hard to Iron 4 mining lesson on the Iron Workshop. In this lesson we'll learn how to create new music radio stations in Hard to Iron 4, just like Bikini Bottom Radio. Introducing new music to Hard to Iron 4 this way is much more efficient since you won't be overriding existing music and thus you will be expanding the available amount of music instead of reducing it and overriding the existing music. Let's get started. Alright, so our first step in creating a new music station is to create a mod file, basically to create the basic structure of the mod that will serve for our music station. Now I have a separate video for that because these things do tend to change so have a look at that video, do that in case you don't know how, and then come back to step number two. In step number two, we'll do a couple of things. So first of all, I need you to download the Iron Workshop Music Template mod. You can find it in Steam. I will have a link to that in the description of the video, so make sure to look for that. So just open the file page and click on subscribe. Once the mod has finished downloading, we will need to copy the files from this mod to your new mod. So I've opened the folder of my new mod. Here it is, new music. So I'm going to go into that new mod. And we also need to open the Steam Apps folder. Usually it's in C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps. So make sure you find that folder before you proceed. Now we need to access the workshop folder and then go to content. In here we'll go into the last folder that I have here. It might not be the last folder for you. But make sure that you're opening the folder with this number because this is the folder that will contain all the hard to iron for mods. So let's go in there. Now inside of that folder you should see another folder with this number. Okay, so we need to open this folder. And from here we will be copying almost all the files that it contains except for the descriptor file which we already have. So we don't want to replace that one. So I'm just going to select everything, I'm going to deselect the descriptor file, right click, copy, paste, and now our new music mod contains all the files that we need in order to create our new radio station. And we can now proceed to step number three, which is to create our music track file. The steps that we have done so far should provide you with a working mod. It is definitely not finished and there are certain elements that still need to be worked on, but the mod should be working and you should have a test song that you can test and see that it is playing. So what I suggest is that after doing all the steps that we have done so far, open Hardfire 4, open your music player and see if you can see this test station, right, with this purple uh, icon. If you see it, then just make sure to press it and in here you'll have a test song, make sure to play it and see if it plays. Now if it doesn't play, like you can see here, it is possible that your game volume, your master volume, is set all the way down. So even if this toggle here is all the way up, it will still not play if your game volume is down. So make sure to raise that, apply, and now give it another try. Alright, so it is working and what we need to do now is to add new songs or replace the existing one, doesn't really matter. And we need to do some localization and graphics, so let's go ahead and proceed with that. Okay, so what we're going to do in this step, we're going to create a new music file, which we will put into our mod. Now, in order to do that, we will have to use Audacity, which is a free music editing software. I will have a link to the download page of Audacity in the description of this video, so make sure to get it. So after you've downloaded and installed Audacity, let's go ahead and open it. And I'll also open the folder of my mod right here. Now inside of that folder, there is a folder called music and inside of it, there is already a test song. Now you will notice that this test song is in an unusual format. It is not MP3, it is not WAV, 
So Paradox are using a, a format called OGG and that is the format which we will have to create our own files in. And it is quite possible that the file that you got off the internet or some other way will not be in this format, but that is fine. That is why we are using Audacity. So in here, I already have a file which I want to introduce into my mod. And this file is an MP3 file, right? If I go to properties, we see that it's MP3. So I'm going to drag it into Audacity in order to open it just like that. And now the only thing that you have to do is to go to file, export, export as OGG, select where you want to export this file to. So I will also just change its name so that it doesn't have dots and spaces and things like that. In here, you can also select the quality. Now, please note that the higher the quality, the bigger the file size. And if your mod contains a lot of songs, then uh, the file size can get actually very, very large. I found out that quality level five is usually enough for a good quality, but that is completely up to you. If you want to go all the way to level 10, that's fine. Just click save, we'll save the file. Audacity will export the file in the new format. And that is it, we have our new file. And one last thing that we need to do is to just put it in the right folder. So I've opened my new mod, I'll go to music and I'll just drop it in here, which is where the file needs to be located in order for the game to recognize it. All right, let's proceed to step number four, editing the music asset files. All right, in step number four, <clears throat> In step number four, we'll be editing the music asset files. These are the files that tell the game that, hey, this file exists, you should know, and you should play it inside of the music player. So let's open our mod folder. And in here, you'll see that except for the music files, let me just sort it by type, hopefully we can get it more organized, well, never mind. Except for the music files, which are in OGG format, we have two other files called IW Music and IW Music Asset. So we're going to open both of these files in Notepad++. Now you don't have to keep uh, this name. You can actually change it to my music dot asset or my music like this. You don't actually have to keep the IW. That is obviously only because this is from the template that we used. So let's go ahead and open these files with Notepad++. Now the first file that I want to edit is the mymusic.asset file. So let's open that. And in here we have two fields. We have the name of the file and we have file equals something. Now the name section is what is used for the localization key in order for the game to uh, give this music file its proper name. And it is also what is used in the second file to recognize the song. So it's usually a good idea to have the same thing in both of these fields to make things more recognizable. So my song is called Hell March. So I'm just going to copy the name in here and I'm going to put it in here. Now, if you just want to add another file, then you can just copy this whole thing, put it in here and put like something like this or an entire or an entirely different name altogether, doesn't really matter, but that is how you add another one. All right, so let me just remove this for now. So we have our Hell March, and I'm just going to take the name and I'm going to replace it in here as well. Now in here we have the music station, so that is what you see in the list to the left. Again, you don't have to keep it as IW test station. You can actually change it to something else. Let's change this to something like my music station and we'll save it. And in here we have our hell march. Now in this file, you can also designate when these uh, songs should be played and how often they can be played. And you do this by adding these chances. And this is done exactly like any other file in the game where you have modifiers. So for example, I can add another modifier in here and just tell the game that this song should play 100% uh, of the time if, for example, I'm playing as the USA, right? Or you can add another tag. 
I won't go too much into this because uh, it's really subjective and I don't really know what people might put in here. All right, so uh, once we've done this, we can save both of these files and we now have our Hell March recognized by the game. One thing that is important to note, if you change your music station name in here, there is another change that you will have to do in the GUI files. So let's go ahead and open those. Inside of here, we have a folder called interface. And in here we have two files, GUI file and a GFX file. So we will open the GUI file. And in here you see that it says IW test station underscore face palette. So if you change the name in here, this name has to correspond to what is here before the underscore face palette. Otherwise, your new music station will not be shown in the game. And there's also one more place in here that you have to change it if we scroll down. In here you see again that it says IW test station. So once again, we need to change this to our new name, my music station, and we can save it. Again, this is only relevant if you decided to change the name in here. You don't actually have to change this because when we get to the step when we create localization, you can see that you can keep whatever was in here and just give it another localization and the game will just show what you put in the localization and not the localization key. But uh, for the sake of consistency, it's totally understandable if you decide to change this. All right, so now we can proceed to step number five and that is to create our localization. Creating localization for this kind of thing is actually very simple. Let's open our new mod. And in here we have a folder called localization and we have one file in here. So let's go ahead and open that. And right now we have two entries. Now you see that the first entry says IW test station. So once again, if you changed it in here, you will need to change it inside the localization in here as well. Now please make sure to only change this part and keep the underscore title in capital letters because that is essential for the game to recognize this localization key. So I will put it like this in here. So let's go ahead and give it a name, Bikini Bottom Radio. And right below that, we have the name for our new track, right? So before we had Test Song, but we removed it and we changed it to Hell March. So I'm just going to take the name, I'm going to put it in here, I'm going to put it in here, and of course I'm going to change the name here to Hell March. And I'm going to save it. Now creating localization is essential because even though you can name your file in here Hellmarch and it might show Hellmarch if you are creating more complex names that have some spaces or that have very long names, they might not fit. So it's best to put it in a localization file. All right, so now we have our localization covered and uh, we are now proceeding to step number six, creating our station graphics. So let's go ahead and create our graphics. Now, in order to edit the graphics, I will be using paint.net. If you have other software that you want to use, that is totally fine. Just make sure that it can work with DDS files. If you don't have other software, please download paint.net. If you don't already have it, I will have a link to that in the description of this video as well. All right, so let's go ahead and create our station graphics. So I'm going to open my mod folder. And inside of here, we'll go into the GFX folder. And you see that we have two files here, one file called radio station cover and another one called radio station cover template. So this template is a file that I created to make it easier for you to create a, a look that is similar to the vanilla game. So let's open paint.net and I'm just going to drag this file into paint.net just like this, okay. And you see that this file already has these frames and it already has this green selection when you select a radio station that shows you which ones are selected and which are not. Great, so now we just need to put an image here. So I already have an image that I'm going to use. It's actually going to be a bit different from what we had at the beginning of the video. Of course, we have SpongeBob in here. So let's go ahead and open that. 
And I'm just going to copy SpongeBob from this image like that. Okay. I'm going to go back to my original image. In here, in layers, I'm going to create a new layer. Now, if you don't see the layers panel, make sure to select the layers panel in here in the top right corner of the screen and that should appear. So in this panel, I'm going to click on create a new layer and I'm going to put my new layer below the background, just like that. And now I'm going to press Ctrl V to paste the image of SpongeBob. I'm going to select keep canvas size, just like this. And now we need to resize it. So let's go ahead and resize it like that. I'm going to hold the shift key to make sure that proportions are not distorted. I'm going to put it like this, excellent. So of course I want to put it here in the middle because we need two versions of the same image. Okay, so this looks good. And uh, now I'm going to create another copy of this layer in here. We have a button called duplicate layer. And now when this new layer is selected, I'm going to move it over to this other section in here, just like that. And there's a couple of ways that you can approach this. You can make one image brighter, the other one less brighter, or you can, for example, make this image on the left, which is used when the radio station is not selected. You can, for example, make it uh, black and white. So you can go to adjustments, hue saturation, and just pull it all the way down like this. So when the radio station is not active, it will be black and white. And when it's selected, it will be in color. You can play around with it as much as you want. All right, so we have our file uh, created and now we just need to save it as a DDS file. So let's go ahead and go to save as. It already opened uh, the folder where we took the file from. So that is very good. I'm going to select the DDS format. I'm going to select the radio station cover file that is already there. Click on save, overwrite. And in here, I'm going to select this format, which is right below the BC7 format. All right. So make sure to select this format because this is what will make the image work properly. So we'll hit OK. It's OK to flatten the image. This is what paint.net needs to do in order to save this image. So click on flatten. This will, however, destroy your layers. If you want to go back and edit it some more, you can hit Ctrl and Z on your keyboard and that will uh, bring back your layers. Okay, but we're done for now. We can minimize this. We can minimize this. And we're done with step number six, which is creating our station graphics. Excellent. Now let's proceed to step number seven, testing this whole thing in game and see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to open my launcher. I'm going to go to Playsets and I will just make sure that my new mod is enabled. And now let's go ahead and see if it works. All right, so here we are in game. So the first thing that we can see is that the image is indeed working. We also see the name Bikini Bottom Radio. And if we click the image, it goes colorful. Very good. And in here we have our track Hellmarch. So let's just see if it plays. All right, so I think it's safe to assume that our new mod works correctly. So that is all you need to know about creating new radio stations in Hardswire 4. If you found this lesson helpful, please give it a like so that others can see it as well. Subscribe to the channel to be notified on new lessons when they're posted. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.